You better call the cops because I break all the rules. They keep making them and I will keep breaking them. But you wanna know a secret? Quilting rules, they're BS and they don't exist. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. Today and every day, I'm making the quilt police very angry. Come on, I'll tell you what I mean. But seriously, what are all these rules? Who makes them and why should you care? People, some people, you, you know those people, right? They get entrenched in the idea of the right way or you're supposed to or you must. Mm, that's my favorite. Because they've been told or taught or heard that the right way to whatever it is, is that. I say to heck with the rules that don't actually exist because it stifles creativity. When I hear you have to, my gut response is, no, I don't. If you know me, it's more watch me not, <laughs> both because I'm generally contrary and because I am the boss of my quilting. And like I said, the truth is there are no rules. But let's break it down and look at five common rules that the quilting police are so concerned about and find out if they really matter. Number one, we're calling out all the sacred cows right up front and starting with the hallowed quarter inch seam. Now, don't get me wrong, a consistent actual one quarter inch seam is a very useful thing. It means your angles and your straight cuts will come together smoothly and your piecing will be more precise. That said, a perfect and precise one quarter inch seam is not the end all be all of quilting. There, I said it. I don't think I'm gonna be struck by lightning, but you never can tell. The truth is there are many times when a quarter inch seam just doesn't matter at all. Like when you're string piecing, or if you're improv piecing or improv piecing curves, or if you're just sewing straight squares and strips together. I could go on, but you get it, you get it. Generally, we sew with a quarter inch seam allowance and that makes things simple, but it's, it doesn't always apply. And sometimes, like if you're doing very teeny tiny piecing, it can actually be a hindrance. Breaking this rule comes really easy to me. I'm not a precision piece, precision piece. I'm not a precision piecer. There. While I know how to piece precisely, it is rarely my primary goal. I make picnic and comfort quilts. And for me, close enough is good enough. This keeps me having fun and enjoying the process, which is really what it's all about. Also, if I do want precision piecing, hand piecing is the way to go. It is so much easier. Speaking of precision, let's talk about, well, my broken iron, but the iron and fabric. There are lots of rules about ironing from pressing versus ironing, steam, versus no steam, press to the side or press open, starch, no starch, or if you're old school, pre-wash or no pre-wash. Me, I iron my pieces instead of gently pressing. Sometimes you need to get those suckers to submit. I use steam, lots of it. I press to the side unless there's a really good reason not to because, you know, with steam, you're gonna burn those little fingers. I don't generally use starch. I don't generally pre-wash fabrics. And I'll mix and match any of it. Washed, pre-washed, starched within an inch of its life with off the bolt. Bottom line is it just doesn't matter. <sighs> okay, hang on. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but let me back up a minute, and this goes for everything that I am talking about today. What is your goal? All of these rules or methods, which is what they are, 
are means to an end, and they affect your piecing and quilting in different ways. So you have to think about what you are trying to achieve, what you want as the end result, and apply the proper tool and method from your toolbox to achieve that result. And that can vary from project to project, but you have to think about it and make a conscious choice about the best method for the result. For instance, if you are normally a heavy starch fan and your next quilt is all curved piecing, pump the brakes before you go laminating all of your fabric. Some drape in those pieces will allow your curves to nestle together much more easily. Every method has a place and a purpose and not everything works for every use case. You have to think about what you want instead of going on autopilot. Each project can be different and you have to go from there. Let's talk about borders. The proper way to have a square border is blah, 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 so on and so on. Well, first off, I'd have to have a square quilt. And the likelihood of that happening in my sewing room, since I hate pinning, often don't square my blocks and my ironing can be hmm, haphazard. The likelihood of that happening and the quilt being square, not high. Sometimes, most of the time, my borders are so in flip instead of measured and averaged and pinned. Heck, most of the time I trim them with scissors instead of a rotary cutter and ruler. You see me do it in the time race video and you know what you also see? You see that it's generally fine. It's generally fine. Seriously, like we didn't trim things with scissors for hundreds of years before the rotary cutter was invented. And, or, you know, plastic for that matter. Like any of these, think about your needs and use the tools and methods that meet those needs. If my borders are a bit wavy, <laughs> my long armor just tucks it and adjusts it for me. I happen to know this isn't a problem as I am their most favorite customer. But speaking of long arming, number four, I don't bury my thread ends and neither does Anna. I just quilt in place and then trim them off. And guys, if it's good enough for Angela Walters, it's good enough for me. I also don't worry so much about my block seam and seams being like not bulky. Like I said, I'm their favorite. But now don't go clutching your pearls. If I am sending a quilt to an outside long armor for digital long arming or other custom work, guys, I make sure my seams are pressed flat and not as bulky and my borders are square, you know, ish. I will make their job as easy as possible. But around here, if we have to fudge a little, I'm okay with that. And number five, which is a twofer. I never properly square a quilt at the end for binding. I just trim the edges relatively straight and worry about the corners later while I'm binding. And speaking of binding, I don't miter, you know, on the angle. I don't miter my joins of the binding. And when I'm doing continuous binding or my easiest binding ever method, I don't miter the final join either. I start with a turn down edge and tuck in the final end and just sew over the whole thing. It works for the results that I want to achieve. And I guess that's you know, that's really the thing about rules. And it's the reason that I bristle at that word, you know, besides not liking being told what to do. Nothing, nothing applies 100% of the time. There are many, many ways to achieve the results you want from a given project. And knowing the benefits and drawbacks of each method, it's powerful. It allows you to choose and to be the boss of your quilting. So make your quilting work for you and break all the rules. Okay, break all the rules except these two. Number one, always, always, always close your rotary cutter. Some of y'all out there are a cautionary tale. <laughs> and number two, never sew over pins. 
just don't do it. It's not worth it. The risks to your body and machine are not worth it. These are safety measures rather than like quilting rules, but they're pretty much the only hard and fast rules I follow in my sewing room. Do you have rules that you always break or that you always follow and why? Let me know. Let me know down there in the comments and press that like and share button while you're there. I hope you have fun, fun breaking the rules and being the boss I know you are. Don't ever forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.